Hello, this is Dennis Polis with another in the series of Open Philosophy videos. In this video we'll be beginning our examination of skepticism. By skepticism I don't mean a healthy investigation of the reasons and evidence for things which are proposed to us, but I mean doubting that we can attain truth in any way through our senses. The arguments for skepticism include direct reasons, such as attacking our senses or our memory, and indirect reasons, such as the dream argument and Descartes' arguments for doubt, with their modern variations such as the brain in the vat, and that shown in the Matrix movie. A common way of arguing that our senses deceive us is to start with optical illusions. When we look at one, we're inclined to misjudge the facts of the matter. If we look at the example on the screen, we are inclined to judge that one of the line segments between the arrowheads is longer than the other. Yet, if we measure them, first the one on the left, and then the one on the right, we will see that they are in fact exactly the same length. This makes it seem as though our senses have deceived us. But, if our senses were deceptive, how could we measure? Because, in measuring, we are in fact using our senses. Our senses have not deceived us at all. There is something else going on here, something that is very simple, but is missed by a simple-minded analysis. We need to ask what we are experiencing, and the simple-minded answer, that we are experiencing the object on the screen, is not wrong, but incomplete. What we are actually experiencing is the objective object, what is on the screen, plus our brain processing the data. Thus, our total experience contains information on two objects, the external object that we're looking at, and an internal object, or subjective object, which is our self. In experiencing things, we learn about our self, as well as about the thing that we're experiencing. Thus, the total object experienced consists of an objective, external object, and a subjective object, which is information about ourselves. This means that our senses have not deceived us at all, but have provided us with more information than we expected to receive. And if we're not aware of the fact that we have information on two different objects, then our judgment is going to be deceived. But once we understand that the information is not only about the external object, but about ourselves, we cease to be deceived. What have we learned? First, we learned that we can only recognize errors by knowing the truth. We were able to tell that the lines were the same length because we could measure them accurately. Once we knew the truth of them being the same length, we could tell that we were in error previously when we thought that they were different lengths. Thus, recognizing errors proves that we can know the truth. Second, our experience contains more information than we realize. We thought we were just looking at the picture of the two lines, but the experience we had contained not only information on the two lines, but information on how we ourselves process data. The external object we can call an objective object, while the internal object the information about ourselves we can call a subjective object. Thus, in every experience there are two objects, what we think we're looking at, and ourself as a secondary object. In every experience there is information about ourself, about what we can do and how we can do it. When we see an object we know that we're not blind. When we hear a voice we know that we can hear. Optical illusions give us information on how we are inclined to judge, but we are not forced to judge. We can suspend judgment on the length of the lines until we measure. Thus, the senses do not deceive us. It is our rash judgment which is deceptive. Next time we will be continuing our discussion of direct attacks on the senses, by looking at a number of historical arguments. The first is found in Plato 
and asks why an ore in water appears to be bent. The next is an argument found in Descartes, who argues that our senses are deceptive because when we look at a piece of wax we don't realize that given heat it may melt. Lastly we will be looking at Sir Arthur Eddington's two tables, the table of common experience and the table of science. Until then, thank you for your time and attention. Thank you.